good? Uh-huh. You can uh, help yourself to that one. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're going gearless. Oh, no. I'm going to wear a suit. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, my hand uh, is just, the swelling's almost gone. Huh. You got about five or six. I made a mistake. I picked up the, uh, the top box, wanting to go into, into the bottom brew box. They were all in the top box, and they let me know it. Huh. Yep. And this time of year, if there's not much blooming in your area, they can be a little cranky. We also see that in the early spring when you have older bees in the hive. Uh, they, we call them wintertime bees, but they can definitely be a little bit more aggressive uh, or defensive. So what we're doing today is we're going to be actually going through uh, the hive and we're going to be taking a sample of some of the drone brood. Um, we're going to be then putting that into alcohol to send for DNA testing to make sure that it doesn't have any aquinized genetics in there. Up in this area of Florida, we actually don't aren't finding any aquinized bees at this point in time. And generally, we would know at this point whether they were aquinized um, just from their behavior. We call it the kick test, but generally when you disturb the hive, if they're really bad, they'll let you know that they're unhappy with you. How hard did you kick it? Because I didn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a disturbance. So we want to make sure we don't get your queen at all. Um, I'm also doing uh, just a health inspection to make sure that uh, we're not seeing any disease issues, which we're not. We're actually looking quite healthy. We've got a good number of bees in here. Definitely seeing uh, eggs and young larvae, so we know it's queen right. I actually don't go looking for the queen. Uh, as long as I'm seeing young larvae and eggs, I know there's a queen in there, or there was very recently, and most likely she's still there. Last time I found her, she was between, if you're going left to right, she was between uh, three and four there. Okay. So next, I'm actually going to go down below and look for uh, some drum brood. They decided to get me last time I did that. Yeah. I guess you're a little more gentle. <laughs> so Josh, I have a couple of recommendations for you. Sure. Um, first thing I'm seeing is you have a huge gap here. Okay. Uh, if you were to leave that, what's going to happen is your bees are going to build comb in between the two, and and it's going to end up uh, making everything gummed up and harder for you to work. So my recommendation is to get into the habit after you've looked at your beehive, to go ahead and push these frames together. When the wood is touching uh, between the frame, that is the correct bee space. Uh, if you have a gap, that's when you're going to have issues. The other thing I'm seeing is it looks like you tried to checkerboard your beehive here. Yes. Where you put frames of empty uh, foundation in between. Um, you don't want to do that in the bottom. Uh, hive body here because what happens is the bees are just going to go and move to the top and work on the top. They're going to ignore this bottom. Okay. You want your bottom to be solid comb from side to side and then place your undrawn uh, out foundation on top and then the bees will naturally move up. They always want to move upwards and if you try to get them to draw a comb in the bottom it's just very difficult. <laughs> um, and also you've broken up your brood nest here uh, so your bees are less efficient. Uh, they can't control the temperature very well because you have so many frames of no bees and no comb in here and so they're they're not going to be raising uh, the brood to the maximum amount that they should be at this time of year and so if we go if we take a look in here we're going to actually if you don't mind move some of these frames around sure as I'm looking for the drone brood through here we're just going to move some of these empty ones out perfectly fine Did you switch the hive boxes by any chance, or you just, just No, I checkerboarded, and apparently they moved up to the top exactly like you said. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically, it, I'll, 
if you don't mind, I'll just uh, move some of these around here for you, and we Please. can actually uh, just reconfigure this to where they'll be a little bit more efficient, and you should see better uh, comb production. And also, just to let you know, um, in August, sometimes your bees aren't going to be able to produce any comb because there are just not enough resources out there. Okay. So uh, not much is blooming in August, and so a lot of people uh, just aren't going to have comb production until September. Starting in September, you get your fall honey flow, and the bees should be able to produce some comb at that point in time. Okay. Have any drone brood in it right now? Um, so we're actually going to probably check one of your other hives. Perfectly fine. Um, unless this frame has some. Just to point out, your bees are building some swarm cells there. Yep. And uh, so they are probably... Well, succession cells, right? Probably. Um, so just keep an eye on that. Uh, they may be trying to replace their queen, which happens quite often. Yep. Uh, every six to nine months here in Florida. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't realize. The books will tell you, oh, your, your queen lives for two or three years, but that's pretty rare to find here. We think that in Florida, the... Queens just wear out faster because they're going all year. Yeah, they're they're laying 11 months out of the year. <laughs> so what we've done here is just reconfigured your hive to where the bees can concentrate on keeping that brood area uh, well populated and warm, and then as they need to expand, they'll naturally just move up. Okay. Um, And again, uh, especially if you're not feeding, I would not expect much in the way of uh, expansion until probably September. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to actually start feeding. That's what I was doing in here the other day. And then uh, I pulled out a frame and it was filled with nectar. Good. How'd we end up with an extra frame? I, I got to put it back in down below. Um, yeah, in this area, you should have the cabbage palms blooming right now. And... Yeah. They do produce quite a bit of nectar. Um, I'm also seeing that white pollen, which I don't remember the name of the plant, but that's been coming in pretty heavy. Okay. All right. Well, I think that they're now, uh, and if you have other hives that are like that, um, I would go ahead and just reconfigure them like I just showed you there. Okay. And uh, next, what's probably your m next most likely hive that you would... So that one had a virgin off. queen on Sunday, so that one's out. Mm -hmm. um, number six is just creating a new queen. It should almost be done. Five should be good. Four is going to be a half box. Well, let's try um, five then. Okay. Six has become an experiment. I moved the queen into the nook to see if a full hive will produce a better queen. Technically, it should. I do that same exact thing. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, because the full hive has a lot of bees and resources, mm -hmm. so they should be able to that larva really well and 
technically you'll get uh, the best queen out of that as you can. Nice. Right. That's good advice on it. Yeah. Am I just not getting much drone because of the, uh, the pre-built frames that I'm using? It's probably more likely the time of the year uh, that they aren't expecting a lot of virgin queens out there right now. So they're, they're not going to waste their resources on producing drones. And then also the fact that uh, your hives are split up like this, um, they just probably aren't feeling like they've got the extra resources to, to put in some drone brood in there. Well, it skips the original frames there. Oh, everything's looking good. I'm going to try to get out here every uh, at least seven days. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah, I mean, health-wise, these are looking good. Um, oh, it's very tight because of the feeder. Right. So, next, uh, I see a pollen coming into that nuke right there and I believe is that the one that has a queen in it yes well, let's take a look in there maybe uh, they're a little more crowded than they have Like you said, hive number four should be okay. Hive number four is gonna be a half box. Okay. Uh, hive number eight might. Oh, take your pick. Throw both half uh, single boxes, so they're a little more recent splits, but they both have a lot of activity up front. Should they have a lame queen? Yes. Yep. Both these should be queen right. And worst case scenario, what we'll do is. Uh, Take an old-fashioned sample where they do the Fabus testing, which is fast aftermath B identification system, um, and uh, they can get um, results from that as well. Another one that skips frames. I always tell it just a little bit longer on the tips. I don't know why. <laughs> but he, yeah, I wonder if he's making his own frames. Um, I, yeah, I do believe the frames he makes himself. And he buys, obviously, the foundation. But... Okay. Stop putting the uh, feeders in before I got to this one. I saw that full frame of nectar and I said, ah, I'm going to stop. I would recommend feeding nonstop until your bees have built all the comb you would like them to. Yeah. Um, so, uh, because when you're starting splits and everything, there's just not enough bees there, especially this time of year when we don't have a good honey flow. Okay. Um, if you want them to build comb, they're going to need the extra resources coming in. I had been feeding earlier, actually during the first flow, I believe it was um, May. Uh -huh. And what I did is I honey bound an entire hive. Oh, wow. Yeah, and in May when you've got that main honey flow going on, yep. I mean, you can add a super every week or two to honey.
Sorry for not having uh, drones everywhere. I'll head to it. I, and that happens sometimes. I heard you... this theory about uh, putting a queen into emergency mode and you strip her down to about three frames where she just lays like straight out as fast as she can. Uh -huh. That's why I've been trying to keep her right on the edge every time. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to grab a different sampling method and we're going to do the Favis test off of these bees. Unless you want to try um, number one. Number one's also a queen, right? That okay. one's a pretty long established. All right, well then let's try that one. Okay. Just if it's easier or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, they get really tight. Well, and uh, especially during the winter time when we're trying to do this, I mean, especially at that time of year, don't have drone brood around usually. So, yeah, we just do the other method. Number one. It's one of the ones I'm getting ready to split here next weekend. Now those raised up ones, is that that's just them extending the cone for the bees or is that drone? Uh right, that's just um should be just regular brood there. We're gonna take a look here. I think because the comb's just not built out yet, um it's not extended fully. Oh, okay. Splitting this hive. Okay. Because you really only have about four frames of brood in there. Um, I think if you're just going to make them weak, uh, you might be better off waiting until they get a few more frames of brood. Okay. Yeah, you only have about three frames, actually. So, so we're doing it the old fashioned way? Alright, I'm going to go grab my sampling stuff.
dogs in or people out? People out. Because <laughs> they don't want people coming in here being drunk and falling in my house. Right. <laughs> I've never done a uh, midnight reassembly of a colony, but I don't think they're going to be happy when I'm doing it. You're right. <laughs> we'll check this one over here. So, so you're not going to be feeding, you may consider reconfigure these hives. Uh, one like this one, which just didn't have a lot of bees in it. You may consider removing the top box altogether until they filled out every frame down below, or at least eight of the frames of comb. Okay. Uh, that'll just uh, reduce their stress level so that they don't have to patrol the entire box, keeping critters out. Okay. So far, out of all the splits I've done, I've only had one knock fail. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Good. Lost my streak of perfection, though. <laughs> well, this time of year, the bees just kind of slow down, and, and uh, you're just not going to have the, the growth that you did in the spring. Mm. Now, is that vodka or Everclear? Or? Yeah, this one is... Uh, <laughs> Isopropyl alcohol? No. Yeah. no. They're not going to be drunk when they die. Put her back. Do you look good? Yeah. Nice fat. Good. Number eight's one of my backyard made queens. Oh, yeah? Yep. And that's good because you're getting local genetics in there. Yeah. And these can be a little, hopefully, better adapted to your area than the others. Ooh. Supposed to test the keeper for being uh, Africanized too? No. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that'll evaporate in a mi couple minutes anyway. Right. So, is, oh, um, is there a way I can pay that twenty-five on the website by credit card or something like that? Because I don't maintain a checkbook. Uh. Do you have cash by any chance? I have, yeah, 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 I should have uh, $25 exactly. Uh, if you give me an extra dollar to convert it to a money order so that we can send it through the mail, we could do that. Sure. Um, otherwise, we can't process your uh, certificate until we get that payment. Yeah, absolutely. So.